Welcome to the Extreme Network's Workflow Composer Zero Touch Provisioning Demonstration. In this video, we will demonstrate the automated configuration of a factory default Summit Series switch. First, let's review some fun facts about workflows. Workflows can be event driven. Sensors interface to the rules to trigger the workflows. Workflows can also be triggered manually or periodically. A workflow is essentially a collection of actions. Packs, shown in the blue boxes below, contain scripts and executables that extend the workflow composer's functionality. Packs can provide sensors, rules, workflows, and actions. The operational view of our XOCTP demo is shown here. A factory default switch is to be provisioned. The switch uses DHCP to get an address on the management interface. The DHCP server is the sensor and will use a webhook to trigger the ZTP workflow. Provisioning the switch is done through a pre-playing effort using some unique identifier for the switch like MAC address, serial number, or even the place in the network that the switch is connected to. A DHCP relay can optionally be used if the place in the network is desired. When a DHCP lease is granted, the webhook is launched to Workflow Composer. The Zero Touch Provisioning workflow will be started. Telnet will be disabled in the first step and SSH will be used for all subsequent steps. The firmware version running on the switch will be compared to the available version and an update will occur if needed. The MAC address will be used as a unique identifier in order to look up the input variables that are planned using an Excel compatible spreadsheet. The input variables are then merged into a template to create a unique configuration. Next, the switch is rebooted and configured. The demonstration that we'll be showing today was tailored to a specific customer's needs to provision a switch to support an IP phone. The template configured the VLANs on an X440 G2 switch, the IP addresses, the SNMP credentials, and SFlow exporting to XMC. This is just an example. We are not limited to these features. Any configuration item could be specified in the template. Operationally, our workflow functions like this. The network administrator cables the factory default switch into the hub and powers it on. The switch will request an address using DHCP. The ISC DHCP server is configured to launch a webhook for the MAC addresses that match an OUI filter. We don't want to trigger DHCP-based webhooks based on any uh, request. The webhook triggers the ZTP workflow. The version of the operating system is compared against the latest available version, and an update occurs if needed. The input variables are retrieved from the spreadsheet using the MAC address and then merged with the configuration template. The switch configuration is loaded and the switch is rebooted. Let's have a closer look at rules. The rule sets up our webhook as shown on the top of the if-then view. It is responsible for triggering the workflow and injecting a, a JSON payload. We can see that the client IP, the vendor ID, and client MAC address are passed in using JSON. On the right pane, we see that the rule parameters are rendered by Workflow Composer into a simple web form. The History tab shows us an audit record of every workflow that was executed on Workflow Composer. We can see the exit state, the timestamp, the workflow name, type, and how it was triggered, manually, webhook, or interval timer. The user can drill down into each step in the workflow to get more details on the execution. This is useful when debugging or auditing the automation. Workflow Composer is open and extensible. It is easy to customize the input variables and templates. To add a new variable, simply add a new column in the spreadsheet. Choose a variable name, place it in the first row, and use that name in your template as shown here. Multiple templates can be created. Just specify the template name in the spreadsheet. For more information on what can be done in templates, reference the Jinja2 documentation. Here are some useful links for more information. We'll start our demonstration with a factory default switch. As we can see, there's no VLAN configuration. 
power cycling the switch will cause it to boot up with no configuration it will issue a DHCP request which will trigger the workflow as stated previously so we'll see in the history pane uh, a new event get triggered and those um, events build out and you'll see be able to see each step in the workflow as they progress here we see that the initial configuration Mistral workflow has been started securing the switch checking the ver version building the configuration and rebooting the switch is happening right now so let's take a quick look at the design UI we can see the packs are loaded on the left hand pane you can drag and drop those into the canvas which generates the code shown in the right hand pane now that our switch is booted up we can see that it has a VLAN configuration with SNMP variables and SFlow variables everything that was in the template got installed thanks very much for watching this demonstration